Good afternoon, Nazareth. My name is Ed Leva. 
and I graduated from Nazareth in 1991. During my time here, I was blessed with an amazing education from dedicated faculty, lifelong friends, and the special honor of being a member of the men's lacrosse team. I now proudly serve as a member of the Board of Trustees. Please give warm thanks and applause to Nazareth University's Chamber Choir, directed by Eric Rubenstein, by this, for this incredible performance. I adore this institution, and given that each of you are here today, I know you do as well. Nazareth is a very special place, and today is a very special day. This weekend and this event are among the pinnacle of a two-year celebration of our 100th birthday. And let me be the first to welcome you here as we recognize this great milestone. I think the video we just watched and the performance we just heard really set the tone. This is a day to celebrate, to honor, and to revel in everything that is NAS. And to guide us through the celebration of 100 years past and 100 more years of Nazareth to come, I'd like to, I'd like to welcome the leader of Nazareth University to this stage. Please welcome President Beth Paul. And judging by the sisters of St. Joseph and the fountain of youth that they've obviously found, I think I will be here for the next 100 years. <laughs> well, good afternoon. It is certainly an honor and a privilege to be here with all of you today. I am amazed. I'm amazed at you. I am amazed at this amazing hall. I am amazed by this amazing university and I am amazed by this amazing moment. I am so delighted to see so many wonderful, friendly faces in this room today. We are honored to have trustees with us. Thank you so much for your leadership. To have students and families, to have staff and faculty, to have Sisters of St. Joseph, to have so many alumni from across the expanse of Nazareth's magic, to have so many here who love Nazareth in all sorts of ways. Thank you so much for joining today. Ed, you slipped away before I could say thank you so much. You uh, really have made a big difference in this centennial celebration, you and your family and your business as a lead sponsor of our centennial. You have allowed us to fully celebrate Nazareth University as a full community. It's a love letter to our community, and I'm so grateful to you for your support. So there is a phrase we have all heard and used many times. We are Naz. I'll say it again. Maybe you'll join me. We are Naz. Think about that, and then look around you. You and those all around you. You are Naz. You are the face of Nazareth, the faculty, staff, students, trustees, and friends who preceded all of us are the faces of Nazareth. Today's honorees are the faces of Nazareth. Nazareth is a place an undoubtedly beautiful one. It's really an idea, a profound idea, built on people. People who teach, learn, and lead a complex community. People who make friends, challenge each other. People who question, dream, and envision possibilities, and then make them so. People who change the world and their own and others' trajectories through their life's work. Each of you is an important part of the Nazareth community, and so are scores of people still alive and connected to Nazareth but unable to join us today, as well as people who have loved this place as much as we do and who are no longer with us. Today, we honor all of these people. And I can think of no better way to start the day off than unveiling a special piece of art for the first time. 
When we kicked off the centennial, we asked people who love NAVs to submit hand-drawn portraits of themselves. Hundreds of these have been merged into a college that depicts, a collage, excuse me, that depicts Smith Hall, the symbolic center of our campus. And I am very, very pleased to present to you the faces of Nazareth. like to present the first prints of the faces of Nazareth to some of the most important leaders in Nazareth's recent history. And to honor these individuals, it is truly my honor to introduce John Drain, Chief Financial Officer of Hearst Television in New York City and the Chair of the Board of Trustees. John, welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much, Beth. When we talk at NAS, we talk a lot about the impact here at Nazareth and the impact of, of people. And some of the most inf impactful people, transformational individuals in Nazareth's history are here with us today. I'd like to honor them and ask them to join me here on the stage. First, we are honored to be joined by both living former presidents of Nazareth, Robert Miller, who served from 1998 to 2005 and was instrumental in working with the Sisters of St. Joseph's to acquire the, their portion of the Nazareth property, including the mother house and 75 acres of land effectively doubling the size of the campus. Don Braveman served as Nazareth, uh, served the Nazareth community from 2005 into 2020. He oversaw a major expansion of the facilities, academic offerings here on campus, and that included uh, new facilities, the Golisano Training Center, Beckham Hall, York Wellness and Rehabilitation Institute, and this amazing hall, music hall, that we're in today, as well as launching Nazareth's nursing and physical therapy programs. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Nazareth presidents Robert Miller and Don Braveman. Next, I'd like to introduce a group of individuals whom I certainly share an affinity with. Um, the role of the chair of Nazareth Board is an important one. As chair, you are charged with guiding a talented and sometimes passionate and strong-willed group of individuals who care deeply about Nazareth. Given the success of the university over the last 10 decades, our board chairs and trustees have obviously done an amazing job. The following have served in this role with, this, with honor and duty and are here with us today. Please join me in recognizing my friends, 
Stephen Nadapau, Brian Hickey, Judy Wilmot Mont Linehan, James Costanza, Sergio Espabon, and Timothy Fortney. Let me continue. Nazareth would not be where it is today without the incredible faculty and staff who have taught here and who have helped to steer, operate, breathe life into the mission of this university. While all faculty and staff members are deserving of our attention, some have gone above and beyond for longer than others, indeed making Nazareth their life's work. Please welcome the faculty and staff with us here, the longest serving service to Nazareth. With 50 years of service, Ron Netske. <laughs> Christine Boshin. And Paul Morris. And with 40 years of service, of staff service, Deborah Hall Genetos. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me and, and offering one round of applause and appreciation for these incredible transformational leaders. And now I am very pleased to share with you the next beautiful round of talent that you see here. Our Centennial Musical Denver for this afternoon welcoming the Nazareth Wind Symphony directed by Dr. Jared Chase performing Festival Overture by Dmitry Shostakovich transcribed by Donald Hunsberger.
When I went to Nazareth between 61 and 65, for those of us who hadn't had close contact with sisters, just the fact they seemed so normal <laughs> was a plus. They seemed to have a wonderful life, a peaceful life, a God-centered life, and that was, that was pleasing to me. I longed for people with my values. You know, there were, there were some uh, that shared my values in high school, but I just so longed. And I remember thinking, oh, at Nazareth, there'll be people who have the same value. And it was absolutely true. It was the spirit, the spirit of Nazareth College, and you felt it. 
Social awareness was, was a part of it. Caring about other people was a part of it. The teachers that they had there were right down to earth. They helped you, they inspired you, they took extra time for you. Sister Mary Lourdes, who taught at Nazareth College, she talked about reverence and how we should reverence every person, respect every person. And I really tried to take that with me my whole life. The spirit of the original founding sisters of St. Joseph is still very much present at that campus. I watched that art center be built. I watched all of the other changes. I watched the mother house become the Galasano Center. Every one of the changes has been for the betterment of people. I think Nazareth does, I mean, what I've seen, I, a, a really wonderful job of their connection with the world. Did you know how cutting edge Nazareth has been for many, many, many years in terms of service to the poor, social justice, outreach, building bridges between people of different faiths? I think the important thing is to, how can we use that and share that in a world that is in such a sad state? There's a lot of hopelessness that is pervasive throughout the world. And you have a group of students who care about social justice and who obviously believe that change can happen. There is a whole generation coming up who will replace the intransigence that we now are witnessing, which is so harmful for our country. And it's out of these college graduates, college students and graduates, that that will to do different is going to come. Big spot in my heart for being a NAS grad. When I graduate, if you go back to the paper that day, I'm the one sobbing. Look at what I was able to do. What I was able to do and how to do it from those teachers. We were so fortunate to have that college and to have those women and men that work there. Good afternoon. My name is Sister Mary Lou Mitchell. I'm the Congregation President of the Sisters of St. Joseph. And it is such an honor and a privilege to be representing the congregation today. As I thought about this momentous milestone, my initial thought was how much has changed since five strong-willed women, sisters, founded this university in 1924. The changes since that year are endless. And I think that if our founders could see what Nazareth is, they might be a bit shocked, proud for sure, at how Nazareth has grown, but surprised. The world Nazareth exists in and the beauty and expansiveness of our campus is completely different from what they and our first students knew. Likewise, the reverse is true. Life as a female college student in 1924 would be mostly unrecognizable to the thousands of young men and women now attending Nazareth. But as I thought about our centennial further, I think the sisters would actually most take note of how much has remained constant. For one, our mission is essentially the same. What a gift, a gift to everyone here and to the world. Although the words and phrasing may have changed over the years, Nazareth was and still is a leader of transformative education through actions for social justice, preparing and inspiring courageous change makers for their life's work. The commitment was present in 1924 and it is in 2024. And the legacy entrusted to all of us 
by the Sisters of St. Joseph a century ago is still deeply relevant to our work today. The SSJ charism, focusing on responding to the needs of the day, is so relevant right now. Our world is overflowing with need. Turn the TV on, scroll through the news on your phone, look around you at our community, our country, and our world. Our world has many needs. It really needs Nazareth. It needs us to respond in new, creative, and courageous ways, like our founding sisters responded in establishing Nazareth. And in the same way, the sisters and so many of our students have responded over the decades, supporting civil rights, addressing the challenges of the Vietnam War, creating a more diverse, just, open-minded, welcoming campus community. Nazareth's living legacy of connecting neighbor to neighbor without distinction has been a common thread in all of our 100 years. The Sisters of St. Joseph refer to every person and creature sharing our planet as dear neighbors. We believe we are called to be in relationship with our dear neighbor locally and globally, equitably and justly. Nazareth is no different. The university still seeks to help our dear neighbors. It is still committed to teaching and training our students to do the same. How we describe this has evolved. Change-making is in vogue now. Activism was popular 30 years ago. Impact is now often used. However you say it, and whatever our ancestors at Nazareth 200 years from now will call it, I've no doubt that it will mean the same thing and that this will be the foundation of what at Nazareth is into the next century and beyond. Values, learning, and service as an antidote to the problems of society are concepts that will always be the Nazareth way. 100 years in, the simplest litmus test of success is what would the founding sisters think has Nazareth become what they envisioned it could, would, or should be? The answer is a resounding yes. And all of you and the faculty, staff, students, and sisters of St. Joseph who've come before us, along with those who will follow us, are the reasons why. On the behalf of the sisters of St. Joseph, I thank the entire Nazareth community for not only remembering the role we played in founding this wonderful university, but also making sure that the values that matter to us continue to imbue every facet of Nazareth. And personally, I just want to say that I don't think I've ever been more proud of a university than I am this one even though I never had the opportunity to attend here, Naz is such a gift. And now I have the privilege of introducing our third musical number of the afternoon. Please welcome the Nazareth Orchestra, directed by Raul Munji, performing Pavan for a Dead Princess by Maurice Ravel.
Amazing. A look at that video and it becomes so very real, doesn't it? The obvious might say, uh, I guess, we're 100 years old. And if that and the orchestra's terrific performance doesn't deserve another round of applause, I don't know what does. In two minutes, that video took us through what in reality is all 52,560,000 minutes of Nazareth's history. A century of minutes, or better put, a century of moments, memories, and dare I say, magic. For Nazareth is truly a magical place. It has touched all of us in different ways, and we are all changed because of the way Nazareth has touched us. Now, of course, one can track the progress and path of Nazareth by turning the calendar, or if you really want to track time in minutes and seconds by holding a stopwatch. But aren't those days and minutes really about the people who have made Nazareth College, Nazareth College, the people who now make Nazareth University, it is the people that make Nazareth, Nazareth. We traditionally talk of a centennial in terms of the time that has passed. We also often think of it as a start for time that is to come, the next century of Nazareth. And it is the people, the humanity of Nazareth, past, present, and future, that sets this institution apart and is why we all love it so very much. What really matters are the 100 years of humanity past and the humanity still to come. Now this is a half that's hosted many, a hall, excuse me, a hall that's hosted many amazing performances since it was built. And we've already heard some inspiring performances today and there's more to come, I promise. This musical heritage and the notion of marking time reminds me of the Broadway musical Rent and its famous song, Seasons of Love, which proposes that life is better tracked through uniquely personal and human measures than in minutes and days. Nazareth is the same. To paraphrase the song, you can track Nazareth's 100 years past and 100 years to come in daylights and sunsets across the Smith lawn in midnights and cups of coffee with friends and classmates at Millie's, in inches or feet of tunnel walks to class, often in pajamas and slippers, in laughter, so much laughter and so many smiles, and yes, in struggle and in strife. But as the song says, time is really measured in love. And there is no place I know where this is more true than at Nazareth. The love and compassion of the Sisters of St. Joseph who built this place. The love of teaching that emanates throughout our learning community as our incredible faculty open and expand students' minds. The way our staff lovingly works to make this a campus that's not only survived for 100 years, but has thrived and will continue to do so. The donations and gifts of time, money, expertise that supporters and friends of Nazareth, some who have never taken a class here, lovingly offer year after year and sometimes through their estates long after they pass. Our facilities teams, tender, loving care for the grounds every day evident in the flowers and the trees that always seem to be blooming at Nazareth. Our students' love of learning, of diverse ideas, challenging debates in each other, love that has made this a place alumni return to year after year, always it seems with a smile on their face, love for Nazareth in their heart, and I might say a little mischief in their eye. To be human, many have said, is to love. To be a part of the Nazareth community is to feel that humanity and to feel that love. 
On behalf of this university, and on this most joyous of occasions, let me thank each and every one of you personally for loving Nazareth. That love comes out in the ways I just mentioned and a million more. And today I'd like to recognize some recent signs of love in the form of donations and gifts. As students and families invest in a Nazareth education, so too do many donors who understand that it takes a whole community effort to support quality education. Since we kicked off the centennial celebration at last year's NAS weekend, we have secured $8.1 million for student scholarships, support for vital new initiatives such as the soon-to-launch physician assistant program, resources that support student success, academic and athletic programs, community engagement activities, and learning experiences abroad, and support for other important strategic partnerships. And you may have heard the exciting news this week that Tom Golisano, a well-known Rochester-based business leader and philanthropist who founded Paychex, pledged $5 million to Nazareth over the next five years. This unrestricted gift gives Nazareth the maximum ability to best use the funds to further our mission of serving as a leader of transformative education through action for social justice, preparing and in inspiring courageous change makers for their life's work. It's an incredible act of generosity on Tom's part. It was so exciting to witness it firsthand, to see his deep emotion, what this meant to him in a very deep way, and also to join other wonderful organizations as recipients. All these gifts mean that our students' tuition dollars are not alone in fostering our life-changing education. We are all part of ensuring a bright future through support of Nazareth's life-changing and humanity-restoring education. We've also launched our 100 for 100 fundraising initiative to celebrate our centennial and to encourage ongoing and enduring philanthropic support for Nazareth support that is critical for fueling the vitality of our next century. Members of our Changemaker Circle, including Nazareth Leadership Society, the 1924 Loyalty Society, and the Founders Legacy Society, are leading the way in giving ongoing and enduring support for Nazareth's mission. We are already well on our way to meeting our goal of 100 new members in each category, and as of August, Nazareth's endowment, our investment in Nazareth's future, stands at 96 million, oh so close to that 100 million that it should be for our centennial. And we will achieve and surpass that. None of that would be possible without the support from people like all of you joining in celebration of our Nazareth community today. So I thank each and every one of you, as well as those donors not here today, and I also thank our amazing advancement team for continuing this important fundraising work. Please give yourself, all the donors, and our advancement team a big round of applause. And we have more musicians joining us on stage for the next exciting portion of today's program. I have the privilege now of introducing someone very, very special, a beloved member of the Nazareth community. The expressive sounds this person has created and shared with the world will be familiar to many. Personally, I've had to admit to him that I think he was the soundtrack to my childhood. As I remember such wonderful time with my grandmother Martha watching her stories and it included Jack Alaco's music. So we are very honored to be joined today by Jack Alaco, a member of Nazareth's class of 1972 and a trustee emeritus. One of America's foremost composers, Jack is an 11-time Emmy award-winning composer, conductor, and music director 
whose career spans television, film, and theater. He has been the composer for Sony Pictures Television's The Young and the Restless and CBS Television's The Bold and the Beautiful, which were among the most watched daytime dramas with daily audiences of 26 million viewers in 98 countries. A native of Rochester, Jack has won 13 ASCAP Film and Television Music Awards in the category of Most Performed Themes and Underscore on Television, and also has worked as a composer and producer for a wide range of established music artists. He has toured as music director and conductor with numerous theatrical productions and symphonies, and has performed in concerts at Carnegie Hall Buckingham Palace, the Grand Old Opry, and the White House. And a special composition by Jack was the very first piece of music performed right here in this incredible venue when it opened in 2018. In honor of Nazareth's centennial, Jack has composed a very special piece of music, especially commissioned for this occasion. And you will hear the world premiere right here, right now, in this beautiful hall. This musical piece is entitled 100 Strong. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jack Alaco as he directs Nazareth's treble choir, chamber choir, orchestra, wind symphony, and members of the Sisters of St. Joseph in this very special musical celebration of Nazareth's centennial. They gave me a few moments to say a few quick thank yous, and uh, I might go a little bit rogue here, but um, <clears throat> you know, I was so busy writing this piece you're about to hear uh, while I was doing some other projects as well, and uh, so I had absolutely no time to prepare any comments or to write anything down. <laughs> Always wanted to do that. <clears throat> anyway, being asked to write a piece of music that celebrates 100 uh, years of Nazareth and tens of thousands of alums, I thought to myself, no pressure, what could go wrong? Anyway, the challenge was to write a piece that captures the spirit of Nazareth while celebrating the past, present, and perhaps most importantly, its future. And there's no words to express how humbled I am and grateful to have been chosen to stand before you today and in front of these wonderful musicians. A few quick thank yous. I want to extend my heartfelt thanks to every one of you for joining us today. Some have come from very far away, old friends, new friends, relatives. I want to thank my parents, Angelo and Catherine, who provided me with the Nazareth education. And I especially want to take a moment to thank my family here today, my wife Stacy, my children Catherine and Nicholas, out there somewhere. My sister Janice is here, biggest heart in the world, by the way. And I want to thank each and every one I want to thank them, each and every one. They are the rhyme and reason. I have been blessed to live a life filled with the magic we call music. And so let's see if we can make a little music, a little magic, I should say, right now. And so with the help of the sisters and the incredible faculty and students of your music department, it's my privilege to give you 100 strong.
I don't even know what to say. <laughs> uh, that, was, uh, that was profound. That was incredible. What a special, special moment. I, words just cannot express uh, the beauty of the music you just performed that you expressed, Jack, and that all of the, the musicians here expressed. The inspiration that you took from Nazareth and how you perfectly captured this feeling, the love, the humanity of this special institution in song. I, I, it's just, it's overwhelming. So thank you so very, very much. I know that this took a lot for all of these musicians to come together and the leaders all throughout the, the college. It's very exciting to come together like this as a community to mark this incredible occasion. And I personally am so honored to have this experience with you. And I'm so glad that you were able to join in this experience, all of you, including our wonderful Sisters of St. Joseph. Thank you. And just one more round of applause, please. Let's truly thank Jack for bringing his expertise. feeling uh, over the last 24 to, 40 to 36 hours or so, I keep on getting to these moments where I think we just can't top this. But we're going to top it. So just when you think we have reached the pinnacle of our celebration, of our centennial, another special moment arrives. Building off the inspiration of that performance, I'd like to now introduce a new honor that will be bestowed for the first time today. We've talked of the many amazing people who have graced this campus, impacted our lives, and made this institution and the world better over the course of the past 100 years. The individuals who helped make this a university that will thrive for another 100 plus years. Today, I'd like to introduce the first ever recipients of the Nazareth Presidential Medallion of Excellence. Eight of these medallions, granted by the Office of the President of Nazareth University, will be presented today to individuals whose excellence spans the offerings, expertise, passions, and commitments of Nazareth. Excellence has been a constant, a constant theme of Nazareth since 1924. Today, we'd like to recognize the first ever recipients of this incredible honor, who after this brief video montage will then join us on stage to receive their medallions.
please welcome to the stage Judy Linehan, Colleen and Tom Wilmot, Jack Alaco, Neil Paulus, Dr. Walter Cooper, Sister Barbara Lum, Chris Hildebrandt, Gail Evans, and Neeland, Teresa, David, and Michael, and Julie Youngblood, five of the seven children of Georgia Connor Youngblood. individuals represent the excellence and the beauty of Nazareth. I will tell you, and I know each and every one of these individuals will also tell you, that there are so many other people deserving of this honor. We could have had 10 people for each of the categories we were awarding medallions, but it's obvious to all that Nazareth simply would not be Nazareth, and progress in our world would have been missed without these wonderful, Nazareth changemakers. As I recognize each, I ask them to step forward and receive their medallion from one of our centennial co-chairs. And I will start with honor with Judy, Colleen, and Tom. In recognition, in recognition of your family's commitment and dedication to Nazareth, Nazareth University bestows to you this medallion recognizing impact and lasting legacy. Jack Alaco, in recognition of your achievements in music composition and production and your Emmy award-winning career, Nazareth University bestows to you this, med this medallion of excellence in the arts. <laughs> Neil Paulus, in recognition of your career, as a professional lacrosse player and your ongoing efforts to change the world's understanding of indigenous people and culture, Nazareth University bestows to you this medallion of excellence in athletics. Dr. Walter Cooper, in recognition of your contributions to civil rights and your belief in and advocacy for the transformative power of education, Nazareth University bestows to you this medallion of excellence in education. Sister Barbara Lum, in recognition of your service in Selma, Alabama, at Good Samaritan Hospital, as a sister of St. Joseph during the Civil Rights Movement, and your decades of experience in vocationally addressing racial issues as a teacher in nursing-related professions, Nazareth University bestows to you this medallion of excellence in service of Nazareth's mission.
Christopher Hildebrand. In recognition of your transformational efforts to challenge the status quo by educating national legislators and lobbying for disability support, Nazareth University bestows to you this medallion of excellence in public service and advocacy. Gail Evans, in recognition of your accomplishments at Microsoft, Bank of America, HP, and Mercer, and your continued achievements as Chief Digital and Technology Officer at Disney Experiences, Nazareth University bestows to you this Medallion of Excellence in Science, Technology, and Math. And Neeland, Teresa, David, Michael, and Julie. On behalf of your mother, the late Georgia Connor Youngblood, in recognition of your mother being the first African American student to attend and graduate Nazareth College in 1948. starting at the age of 15, I might add, by serving as a trailblazer who desegregated Nazareth and led continual progress through work, community, and family. Nazareth University bestows to you, in, mem in memory of your mother, this medallion of excellence in trailblazing. Again, ladies and gentlemen, please share your appreciation for the inaugural recipients of the Nazareth Presidential Medallion of Excellence. Wow, what an event. Two years ago, when we started planning our centennial, I know we've cheated, you know. But you don't turn 100 more than once, so. This is exactly the kind of celebration that we hoped for. A gathering of inspiring people like all of you, unified in love and appreciation for Nazareth. Every person in this room deserves recognition 
You and your commitment, belief in, and efforts to support and grow Nazareth are immeasurable. I thank you for coming today and for all you have done and continue to do for this university. Allow me, for one moment, to offer some special thanks. I would ask that all of you understand and appreciate what a labor of love it is to create something like this. So in comes President Paul in the middle of a pandemic. And, you know, during my uh, time in getting to know the institution while I was, you know, we were considering one another, whether this was going to be a relationship, we were so excited, my husband and I, because we kept on doing the math and we realized that Nazareth's centennial was coming up and what an amazing opportunity that would be. And so, as I was sitting at our dining room table, doing all sorts of deep dive understanding of what Nazareth is all about. And of course I had known Don and I knew, I knew a lot of what Nazareth was about, but I now know what Nazareth is about. And so I would be sitting at my dining room table and Bill would be coming behind me saying, what would the sisters do? (laughs) What would the sisters think? And that was so inspiring to me. Little did I know the depth of that inspiration that would grow. So I am so very, very grateful, first of all, to my husband who is here, and to our daughters, Martha and Sophie, for understanding in a very gracious way that loving me is loving my vocation. Uh, I know you've had to share me with a lot. And I am just very, very deeply deeply grateful. And I think you can see the meaning and significance that 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 has. So thank you. I'm very grateful. And then I want to thank, thank some masterminds. So we've talked about the theme of love today. And honestly, I really do think what has been created this weekend is a profound love letter for Nazareth University. And the masterminds behind this are Caroline Tolbert and Justin Shaw. other people that go into making an event like this, like all sorts of people that come out of corners from everywhere. So would you please join me in thanking everyone who has been part of making this weekend so I hope every one of you will be able to join us immediately following this event for the dedication of one of Jack Alaco's acclaimed guitars. Then at 4.30, I don't have any idea what time it is right now, but on the Golisano Academic Center lawn for the Centennial Tastings Happy Hour, for Mass at 5 p.m., for the Centennial Soiree event at 6, which will feature dancing, food, drinks, and then at 9 o'clock for fireworks. So as I closed this event, I naturally lean into my own forward-thinking personality. I can't wait for the next 100 years of Nazareth. But I also know that stopping to simply appreciate and be in the moment is important. This is the moment when we close the first century and we start the next. To be fully present here is truly an honor, as it is an honor to lead this university throughout this huge milestone. Being present in the moment is hard. There's so much going on around us, so many opportunities, and of course, so many challenges. Let us center ourselves in the power and beauty in how Nazareth University has endured and thrived. 
And in that centering, let us feel the stirrings of excitement as our powerful and beautiful future begins to emerge. We are NAS, and we will continue to be NAS. Earlier, I mentioned the song Seasons of Love from Rent. The final lines of that song are so appropriate for today and for enjoying this moment. The song says, it's time now to sing out, though the story never ends. Let's celebrate. Nazareth University, our story has just begun, even though we're a century old, so let's keep on celebrating. Thank you so very much for being here.